Are you tired of going out to shoot, being excited to come home and edit your photos, and then realizing that your photos aren't as good as you thought they were? Well, here are five tips that will help instantly improve your photography. What's going on everyone? This is Dwayne from Daring Depictions coming at you with another video. In today's video, I will be mainly talking to portrait photographers but these tips apply to all forms of photography. So let's hop straight into it with the first tip. Tip number one, pay attention to what's in your frame. When you're framing up your shot, take a quick second to remove anything from the background that's unflattering to the image you're trying to capture. This is especially true if you're doing wedding photography. When you're shooting a wedding, first you wanna make sure that you take your subject and place them where the good lighting is, but second, you wanna clean up behind them. Make sure you clean up any empty water bottles or you wanna make sure that nobody's bright neon jacket is in your shot. And this tip applies to all forms of photography, not just weddings. When I'm downtown with the model and I'm doing a photo shoot, I don't just let random plastic bags or random trash get into my shot. I either clean it up myself or if I don't feel like cleaning up after everybody, I'll just move to a different location. Tip number two, pay attention to your angles. When you're shooting your subject, you always wanna be at eye level or below eye level. Now, for creative reasons, if you wanna shoot your subject from above, you can definitely do that. But the standard is either at or below eye level. And the reasoning behind that is because you wanna make your subject look larger than life. This tip really helped me when I was first starting out because I'm a tall guy. I'm about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, so whenever I was shooting portraits, I was always looking down at my subject because I was always standing straight up. You gotta master what they call the photographer stance. You know what I'm talking about. It's the stance where you take one foot forward and kind of go down into like a half lunge. Yeah, that one. When you angle your camera lower than your subject, that forces the subject to look down. This creates the illusion that they're bigger than what they really are, and it helps them fill out the frame more. Tip number three, change up the distance between you and your subject. When you're out shooting with a model or whoever it may be, don't be afraid to get closer to them. Now obviously don't run and just get up in somebody's face, but don't be afraid to ask. Now, if you have a good zoom lens, this won't be that big of an issue for you, but my fellow prime shooters know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll find a great angle, pose your model exactly how you want them, and then just shoot away without moving an inch for the majority of the shoot. All because you didn't wanna ask if you could get closer. You want a variety of photos from a shoot. The last thing you wanna do is get home, upload your photos to Lightroom, and realize you pretty much shot the same photo over and over again. Trust me, I've done it before. When you're shooting, make sure you move around and try to shoot at different distances. Shoot some wides, get some mid range, and then get those tight close ups. This will ensure that you have a variety of photos to choose from. And if you're doing client work, the client will have a bunch of photos from a bunch of cool and interesting angles to choose from. Tip number four, use some foreground in your photos. When you use foreground in your photos, you're essentially adding more depth to your photos. All you're doing is placing your subject behind something. This could be a glass window, some greenery, a crowd of people, pretty much anything you can think of as long as it doesn't block your subject completely. You can even pick something up like a leaf or whatever it may be and hold it up to your lens and use that as foreground. When you use foreground in your photos, it adds more context to the photo itself, as well as the location it was shot at. Unlike most portraits where you're just focused in on the subject and the rest of the background is blurred. Now, it's nothing wrong with those type of photos, but next time you're out, I challenge you to place your subject behind something you can use as foreground. My last and final tip is to understand the exposure triangle when you're out shooting you at least want to understand how your camera works as well as learn how to shoot in manual mode because when you shoot in manual 
you'll have complete control over your camera settings. Now I'm gonna go over the exposure triangle very briefly, but I will be making a full in-depth review on it very soon. We'll start off with shutter speed. Your shutter speed controls the motion blur in your photos. If you wanna stop motion in your frame, raise up your shutter speed. But if you want that motion blur, maybe for artistic reasons or whatever, lower your shutter speed. The only thing about changing your shutter speed is that when you raise up your shutter speed, you're actually letting less light into the camera. But when you lower your shutter speed, you're letting in more light. The second part of the exposure triangle is your aperture. Your aperture controls your depth of field. You see right now I'm shooting on the Sigma 30 millimeter F 1.4 and I believe I'm at F 2 right now. And you can see that my background is blurred out. If you want a nice, creamy, blurred out background, you lower your aperture. But if you want your background to be in focus, you raise your aperture. When you lower your aperture so that you can get that nice, shallow depth of field, you end up letting in more light into the camera. But when you raise your aperture, because let's say you want your background in focus, you end up letting in less light into your camera. The final piece of the exposure triangle is your ISO. ISO is used to digitally brighten up your image. The only thing about raising your ISO is that it'll add digital noise into your photo. That's why I like to mess with like my shutter speed or my aperture before I decide to bump up my ISO. But don't be afraid to bump up your ISO. It's better to have a noisy photo than no photo at all. If you're still confused on how the whole exposure triangle works, that's fine. Again, like I said, I will be making a full in-depth review on it. Well, that's it. Those are five tips that will instantly improve your photography game. Let me know if your photography has improved at all by applying any of these tips. And tag me on Instagram if you end up using anything I showed you in this video. Well, like I said, this is the end of the video. Catch you in the next one. Peace.